Hey. <clears throat> How's it going? Uh, so I'm Mike Smuga. I'm a principal user experience manager from uh, Microsoft. Yeah, um, I was actually born in Wrocław uh, and moved to uh, the States 20 years ago. Um, right now, I work uh, within a team called um, OSG Design, and this is the products that we work on. So we work basically on uh, the operating system for uh, all of the products, anything from uh, Internet of Things devices to uh, mobile phones, tablets, tablets, two-in-ones, desktops, uh, or laptops, desktops, Xbox, Surface Hub, and uh, the HoloLens. Uh, so as I said, uh, I live in Seattle. Uh, if you guys haven't been to Seattle, Seattle is a super nice uh, town in Pacific North Northwest. Uh, it's, uh, Microsoft is definitely one of the biggest employers within the area, but Amazon also uh, is headquartered there. Uh, so is Starbucks, Boeing, uh, and so on. Uh, this is the team of, uh, of people that work on all the products that I talked about um, earlier. So we have visual designers, interaction designers, motion designers, uh, design program managers, design developers, and uh, design researchers. Uh, all together about 25, uh, 250 people. Um, so, um, okay, the presentation. So this was the team, now the, the presentation. So what I want to talk about is the shift uh, that uh, we're making uh, in terms of how we are building products at Microsoft. And uh, it's a little bit of an internal story, but also hopefully uh, it's going to inspire you a little bit, you know, in terms of uh, how we can uh, approach design. And so the shift that we've been seeing over the past several years is you know, a while ago there was this shift uh, where a, uh, a great designer really needed to pick up uh, prototyping skills, right? To to really kind of design and, and experience the medium, uh, especially if they are working on software, to uh, to experience the medium that they are working on. And today, um, you know, we are we are being basically uh, kind of overwhelmed by uh, the amounts of data that that uh, that come our way, and 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 the data impacts how we work uh, to a significant degree. Um, so, you know, you've probably all heard the term big data, right? It's basically anything that doesn't fit on, on one computer. Where is all this data coming from? So, uh, if you look at the, at the devices that, that surround us, the, uh, the, the devices that basically generate all of this data, the sources, this is just an example of the sources. It used to be just the PCs. Now we have smartphone tab uh, smartphones, tablets, uh, smart home devices, uh, anybody pro everybody probably has some so sort of a wearable device uh, these days, and, and of course all the sensors that surround us. Um, Microsoft recently collaborated with London, uh, London Underground on a project uh, that helps uh, the, the city manage the, um, the, the subway system. And this is just an illustration of uh, how much data actually uh, comes from from London Underground. Um, if you you know, if you look at um, each station, for instance, there is an escalator within each of the stations, and each of the escalators has a number of these little wheels, and all of them are connected and send data to you know to uh, to various uh, servers, and and you know it's a designer's challenge to present this data and to um, do something. Uh, a little bit more meaningful you know, than showing a chart like this uh, uh, so that it's, it's, it's best optimized for, uh, for, the, um, you know, uh, for the application. So if you look at the, um, you know, uh, there's this, this new development, right, like the, the, the new role called uh, data scientist. If you guys have kids who are trying to figure out, you know, what to do in college and are interested in making a ton of money, uh, this is a great investment. So, um, you know, the data scientists are, is, is, is basically a role um, that, you know, it's are people who, um, you know, are trained at finding data, at analyzing data, and uh, at presenting data in meaningful ways. And so what, what I'd like to argue, and what we've seen in our studio at Microsoft, is that um, designers need to be, uh, need to pick up a little bit of the da da data scientist skills, um, you know, in order to, one, help them, you know, bring a little bit objectivity to the decisions that they are making. 
Two, it gives them an opportunity to evolve the design process, uh, you know, how we design products. And finally, and, uh, you know, they, they have a hu huge opportunity to, to help um, the data scientists and the, the, you know, all the sources of data to transform the data in such a way where it's applicable, applicable to humans. And so um, I'll go over each of these um, uh, kind of uh, uh, points uh, in a little bit more detail. So if you look at like if you look at the uh, objective approach, right? Like w it, d design is a fairly subjective uh, subject, especially some um, some fields like visual design. And the question is like, how do we know that we're successful, right? Like, how do we know that the the, the stuff that we design is really going to resonate well with with, an, with the users, uh, is going to fulfill the uh, the business goals? Not only this, if you work within a team like uh, within an organization like Microsoft, we are surrounded by engineers, and the engineers are the you know usually the smartest guys in the room. And so, how do you how do you work with uh, with them? And um, by designers embracing data, it, it helps, it brings a common language to, uh, to working with the discipline. Here's, here's a very quick example. This is actually a visual design example, but this is what, uh, uh, this project is not very great, but this is what icons used to look like, you know, in Windows 7. And uh, we redesigned these icons. Uh, you know, we, we've been trying to push the visual language of, uh, of Windows as, as, as the product is evolving. And, you know, and the question is, like, how do we know whether the first set is better or the second one is better? So we've done, uh, we did a very quick study of 2,500 users, and, and this set is preferred by 79% uh, of people. And so when you go to an engineer with, with this, uh, this uh, kind of data set, it's significantly easier to have the conversation of, should we stay with this or should we go with this? And commissioning a study with, with 2,500 users, it's, it's trivial this, these days. We have our own internal tools that we use for that, but you know, there are websites out there that um, you can just you know, submit a problem that you have and they have uh, end users with different domain, domain knowledges and they can, uh, they can very easily help you guys uh, collect the data and, uh, and answer questions. The, the, second, uh, the second aspect is really the, uh, the process of design itself. So the way we used, to, uh, we used to work at Microsoft was that you know, the, uh, the product cycles were extremely long. Windows would take on average two to three years uh, to ship. And there was a saying that like, once we ship something, it was good enough and we don't need to revisit it. Well, the, the, the problem itself the, the, the process itself has changed significantly. And we've, we've embraced uh, you know, a, a little bit more iterative process from the perspective of how we design. And Windows 10 is a great example of that. Um, we, have, um, we have this uh, uh, Windows 10 flighting program where basically anyone can sign up. And so the, 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 the day we publish a build uh, of Windows, uh, we get hundreds of, uh, hundreds of thousands of users Switching to that build and you know and testing it for us and and sending us information that's very that's invaluable to the design process, um, you know th this is this is an example for instance right we we've been playing with different ways in which users can customize their start menu and the question is is this one preferred or is this one uh, more successful or the other one with the with the flighting program in a matter of a day we can get you know, feedback from 350,000 people are going to be running this win version of Windows, uh, or half of the 350,000 uh, people is going to be running this version of Windows, the other half is going to be running this version of Windows, and we get uh, very useful uh, information that helps us uh, move design forward and, and iterate on, on, on design. Finally, this is, this is the... the um, you know, the kind of, I, I think the most interesting uh, challenge for designers is really how do we transform the, the data uh, that, is, uh, that is generated by all the devices around us? Um, you know, I, I think that we, we are still, uh, you know, we are still in this um, mode where we think about information a lot, but we don't think as much about the fact about the knowledge. 
Uh, we, we design around data, we design user interfaces that present data, but we don't think about the data itself very much. And the challenge for a designer is, you know, how do we bring the, the humanistic uh, uh, approach to, um, you know, kind of presenting and, and, and interacting with data? Um, how do we shift from, you know, something that's useful to something that's meaningful, right? Something that's, uh, you know, from, from something that's usable to something that's a little bit more human. And so, you know, here's, a, here's a, an example. Um, I have this watch you know, that basically collects data on pretty much every single sports activity I do, whether it's cycling or running or swimming or paddle boarding or just any, anything that I, um, I do. And, and this is what I see when I log into the website, right? It just shows me all of this data. Um, and it's, you know, it's not very, I, I stare, at it, uh, stare at it every single day and, and, uh, and think to myself, so what? And so, um, you know, like if, if, if I asked you about, you know, if I asked you about how you are doing with your work, workout progress, you wouldn't recite rows of data showing how you did day after day after day. You would tell me something significantly more, uh, more interesting about it. So, so we, we think a lot about um, uh, kind of shaping data in such a way that, that makes it a little bit more, more human. And what makes us human, right? Like, it's the motivations, right? It's, the, it's building relationships and staying within the appropriate context. So um, I'll talk a little bit about each of them. So motivations, you know, it's like, why, why are we talking about motivations? So as humans, we, we, we want to matter, right? Um, you know, we, we want to live lives that, that have meanings. And, um, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't read books just to read books because we want to read books. We want to be smarter. We don't work out, you know, just to, tr you know, just to, tr uh, to, to work out. We really want to get healthier. And the question is, you know, how do we, um, how do we think about motivations and how do we um, use the data that's available to us as designers to ca uh, cater to those, to those motivations? How do we switch, you know, shift from uh, designing around tasks to designing around motivations. And so, um, you know, it's, uh, here are some kind of guiding principles in, in terms of how we um, approach the, the problems at, at Microsoft. We're trying to, you know, solve for the higher level uh, goals and motivations. We're trying to take care of the little things for the users. And we're trying to basically extend and amplify humans. And so, uh, here's a, a, an example of, you know, what the, um, there is this awesome application called RunKeeper that I also use. Every time I run, it tells me something very interesting about the run that I did. Was I faster, was I slower, did I achieve my personal record? You know, am I getting better, am I getting worse, do I need to work out harder? And so, that application seems to know a little bit more, you know, what motivates me and, and cater to those, to those motivations. The, the second aspect of, of being human is, is building relationships, right? So, um, you know, Product services and, and, and devices have become um, integral parts of our lives. Uh, you know, we, we have, uh, we let these tools into, into our homes and in, into our lives. Um, you know, my phone probably knows me significantly better than anybody out there. My phone has seen every single piece of communication. My phone has seen every single photo I've taken over the past two, three years. My phone really is in the position to build the strongest relationship with me of, uh, of um, you know, any devices or, or even, um, you know, many humans. And so how do we create value? How do we shape the data in such a way that we can create value, uh, you know, that, that shows how, how a relationship is growing over time? You know, how do we shift the conversation from uh, per, uh, building experiences that are personalized to building uh, uh, experiences that are relationship-based? And so, uh, you know, it's, when we build relationships, it's important to, um, you know, build and maintra maintain tra trust, um, you know, build relationships in stages, and, and getting to know people in meaningful ways. Um, you know, and here's a, a little example of... Um, how we've been, you know, trying to build relationships with, with, with users over time. Connect is a great example. Now Windows Hello is a great example. It's basically a way for you to, um, 
you know, start interacting with any devices, not by, you know, sitting in front of your computer and just typing in your username and password, but your computer actually recognizes you. It sees you, it knows that you are who you are, it logs you in, it sets up the computer just for you, and, you know, it, 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 it starts uh, the, the project where you, where you left off. And that's kind of the beginning of, of building a, a relationship between your computer and, uh, you know, and, and you as well. And the, the third um, aspect of, of being uh, human is, is really building experiences that are, kind of, that, that are appropriate. So designing technology that seamlessly integrates uh, uh, into the, the human world. Um, you know, so the question is, how do we shift from uh, devices just being smart to, to devices being um, uh, appropriate? So how do we build of natural capabilities? Um, how do we blend, um, you know, into uh, into physical world, and how do we uh, balance the the overall net positive? Right, Pe people are very afraid of, you know, what computers know about them and how they are using that information. So how how can we bring a little bit more certainty into how we inter uh, interact with with with, uh, with computers? And to wrap up those um, uh, those examples. I want to show you a quick video uh, around Cortana. So Cortana is a, a personal assistant that we're working on, we've been working on over the past uh, several years, and uh, it originated on Windows Phone and um, is getting integrated into more and more products at Microsoft. Uh, Cortana really, um, uh, in a way, uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a great example of how our designers working with data scientists and engineers have been able to shape the experience in such a way where you, know, you feel like Cortana gets to know you over time, like Cortana understands your motivations, and, uh, and it does it in such a way where you, are, as, the, uh, as the end user, are in control. Cortana. So Cortana is your personal assistant that, as, as I said, um, um, really gets to know you over time and, uh, and works for you. And so here are some examples of how, how Cortana gets to, how, how it meets you over time, how it builds relationship with you, and how it, um, you know, how it uh, uh, increases uh, tra trust between you and the computer. And so, um, you know, when you, when you talk about data, um, right, so the, the, the points that I really try to cover is uh, data is important to design because it keeps us honest, it helps us work with engineers, it helps us work, uh, make, uh, think about, you know, what makes us successful. Data helps us iterate, it helps us bring stronger, build uh, stronger products. And as designers, we really have the opportunity to transform the data in such a way where, you know, it's... Um, it, it makes our computers appear, or our devices appear a little bit more human. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it, it, it allows us to model the data from the human angle to work on the cognitive systems that go behind uh, the, uh, some of those components. And, and it's, it's really this bridge to the natural human uh, interface. Um, you know, and as, as I said, data, uh, just because data is available to us doesn't mean we should use it. We should. We should always keep it appropriate. We should always make sure that the user feels like they're in control. So it's very important for us to, you know, kind of keep building trust with the users as well. So that's it.